Good morning, I'm Tiffany Windsor. Welcome to Inspired at Home, a place where my creative friends and I gather to share ideas for living a creative life. It's about crafting, healthy lifestyles, sharing positive, uplifting ideas, and connecting. Today's topic and discussion is all about love. Things we love to create, things we love to eat, being in love, loving ourselves, and creating with love. In the words of Mother Teresa, love begins at home. And it is not how much we do, but how much love we put into that action. Are you sharing the love? Do you craft your creative projects with love? Do you cook with love? Do you speak with love? No matter how difficult the challenge or situation, and even if you think you've exhausted all your options, remember my quote. When all else fails, pour love on it. My guests are here to share the love. What I found that we all have in common is we love creating in our studios. Our studios are a source of sanctuary and inspiration. My sister Eco Heidi is sharing how to make a super simple mosaic project and she's digging into her recycle stash. Linda Peterson shares a stamping technique on a collage canvas. Candace J, the Cool to Craft Creative Play Muse, shares her source for creative inspiration. And I join my sister Candace in her studio where she's going to teach you how to make rose petal salve. Lovely projects, lovely creative girlfriends, and we're here to share the love with you. By the way, I love having an angel over my shoulder. For my creative project today, I have a technique that I think you will enjoy making and giving any time of the year. My textured canvas is created with texture paste and stencil paint cream. Let me show you how you can create your own heart art canvas with love. Here are the supplies that you will need to create your texture heart canvas. Texture paint, small canvas, a heart pattern, palette knife, stencil brushes, stencil paint cream, and I use shrink plastic for my stencil and use a craft knife and scissors to cut it. The first thing I did is I took a piece of paper, folded it in half, and cut it into my heart shape. I had to keep adjusting it to be sure that it fit onto my canvas. The next thing you would do is actually trace your pattern onto your shrink plastic or whatever you're going to use to create your stencil. So as you can see, I've cut that out right here. I used the craft knife to start my cut in my plastic and then used my scissors. 
And as you can see, it's not exactly precise, and that's fine. You don't have to be absolutely perfect in the shape of your design. So you lay your pattern, your stencil pattern, over your canvas and just squeeze that texture paint. And you want a lot of texture on your heart. And you're going to have to carefully hold that heart stencil in place. If you wanted to, you could probably use double stick tape to help hold it in place. But I'm just going to hold it with my hand and carefully move that texture paste around. Again, you want it real thick on this project. And take care around the edges that you don't push that paste up under your stencil. The fun thing with the heart is you can use the tip of your palette knife if you want to add more design or texture to it, or you can make it smooth. Really the choice is yours. Lift your stencil, and you have your heart pattern. The next thing you want to do is let this dry completely overnight, especially since I'm using that really thick paste. I want to let this set overnight to dry completely. Now that my texture paste has dried on my canvas, and as you can see it dries to a really nice dimension, the next step is to apply your color. What I like to do is use that same template that I use to apply my paste to actually place right back over so that it keeps the colors where I want on the heart so that I can come back in with other colors for the background. I'm using stencil paint cream which is actually oil based but it is water, soap and water cleanup. And here's a tip when you are working with these stencil paint creams they do, when they set, they do form a skin on the top that helps protect and preserve the paint for your next use. So when you open up your container, don't be worried if you find that there is a skin on the top because we're going to break right through that so that we can pick up color with our brush. I'm using a stiff stencil brush and just picking up color and I'll do that with several other colors so that I have them ready because the painting process goes pretty quickly. The stencil paint cream comes in different size containers and in different color collections. So again, I'm just loading that stencil paint cream onto the brushes. Realigning the pattern. Keep your stencil brush straight up and down on your canvas and start circling. Keep rubbing that color in. And as you can see, the color really goes a long ways. You don't have to keep dipping in for more color. Changing color. And it's blending beautifully together. I can see I want to add more cream to my brush. Be sure and get into all of the nooks and crannies. And 
and there I have my heart. Isn't that pretty? I love adding the yellow or leave some white showing because that adds more dimension and makes your heart colorful. For the background, I love to use copper and golds. And you apply your paint the same way. And just being careful along those edges, I have a little bristle here, careful along the edges so that you're not bringing that color up over the heart and just keep working it in. I do like to apply several coats of the copper background color so that I can be sure that I've worked the color completely into the canvas. That canvas is really textured so you have to keep scrubbing and working your color in. When you take a look at my finished example, you will also see that I have used a stencil that has some fun designs and applied that over my background color. To do that, I would let the background color set overnight and then come back in and do your over stenciling to add some fun design to the background. So keep working your color into the background, layer the colors. That's what's so much fun about the stencil paint cream because it is blendable and you just keep layering your colors and you can get some really interesting effects with your color blending. In addition to the top, you want to be sure that you get the sides of your canvas also because you want the whole canvas covered with color. As I mentioned, this is an oil-based stencil paint cream, but it is clean up with soap and water, so makes it really easy to use. I think we should celebrate love all year round, and a collection of canvas hearts is the perfect way to do that. Linda Peterson and I have become good friends over this last year. I love our late night brainstorming sessions, which have produced some of our best ideas. Here's Linda to share a few of the things that she loves. Hello everyone and welcome to my creative space. This is the space in my home that I absolutely love and I guess it's a good thing because I spend a lot of time here and um, my family always knows that I'm hiding out here. I just get a lot of serenity being in this room. It's quiet. I don't have the hubbub of the city. I actually live in the country and about as loud as it gets is I get to hear the birds chirping outside. But I can lose myself in creativity and I can't imagine a day without creating something or doing something creative. Here recently I've just fallen in love with doing these mixed media collage canvases and I guess I love it because I get to pile on all the different layers of paper and paint techniques, bling, just you name it. I put it on here. I put my feelings on here. and. I can get lost in this room and creating these mixed media collages for hours. So um, I'm actually working on a canvas right now and I want to show you one of my favorite techniques. 
what you're going to do is you're going to grab an old piece of bubble wrap. And this can be the big circle wrap, bubble wrap or it can be the little bubble bubble wrap. That's kind of a tongue twister. But what you're going to do is you're going to um, just going to apply paint right over the top of the bubble wrap. This is just so cool. I love this because I just love creating layers and layers of texture in my collage. And you can save this piece of bubble wrap and use it over and over again. You don't have to throw it away after you get done using it this time. But then we're actually going to use it as a stamp. Watch this. It is so cool. So I've just laid it on there and then pressed it down. And then when I pull it up, I get this amazing, like, shabby chic look. So that's one of the techniques that I just love. I don't know. You know, it's such an easy technique to do, but I just, I love the results. I love getting my hands dirty and finding all the different textures that I can put on to create, you know, something interesting. So I hope this is inspiring to you. I hope that you go and create and gather all those objects that you love and collage them all together on the art canvas and make some great art. So thanks for joining me in my creative studio. I hope I've inspired you. And I hope to see you on my show, Linda Peterson TV, Living the Creative Life. Until next time, keep doing the things you love. My sister Eco Heidi loves creating in her studio. That's definitely something my creative girlfriends and I share in common. What Heidi tells me is no matter how messy or unorganized or how many projects she is working on, being in her creative space just makes her smile. Yes, I do love my studio. I just love the way it feels. I love to create in it. There's just something special about it. So today I'm going to show you how to do a really simple mosaic with a heart because I love, I love the look of this, I love to teach it, and everyone seems to enjoy it. So let's get started with this fun mosaic. So the first thing you're going to need is a piece of wood and I've just, I actually purchased this at the craft store. Uh, you can also use some of those that are beveled edges. These are really inexpensive and I've um, also base coated it with an ivory and I put my pattern of my heart onto the board. I've also up here at the top I've drilled two piece, two holes so that I can put my wire in it later for hanging it. Now I've got all kinds of different pieces of mosaic tile. You can use like these that are from a plate and I have these wonderful wheeled nippers. I really like them the best because they they just work wherever you want them to. You put the, the wheeled nipper in and it cuts. And anything else that you need to cut, it cuts glass. So then you begin to glue your pieces in. Just put a little bit of glue on the back and put your piece into the heart that you've drawn onto the, the wood. And you always put a little bit of glue on the back of each piece and then place it down into your pattern. And you just continue until you have the whole thing completely covered. When it's completely covered, it's going to be like this. And I also, on this one, have put a word in it. You use the little alphabet letters, any phrase that you want to use. And then I've completely covered the edge with some masking tape, leaving me about a quarter of an inch for the grout to go into. And I've mixed my grout. And this is just a beige grout. And I'm going to put some gloves on. And we're going to get started on grouting. Okay, so just add your grout. 
And I just put it on top and I just smooth it around and remember that the masking tape is there to create a line for us. And it's not it's not a process that should take a very long time. It's just a really quick putting it on and just very carefully you have to be careful that because you have some cut edges there and you don't want to cut yourself. So you're just going to put it in and kind of smooth it out. I'm going to get off any excess that I have. And then I'll do the rest of the work with a sponge that I've put into water and I squeeze out all the excess and it's just an inexpensive sponge and all I'm going to do is uncover kind of smooth over the grout over the over the pieces and when I have extra I put it onto the container I go back in and clean my sponge and one of the most important things right now at this point is to keep your sponge as dry as you can and just keep cleaning and you can see all those beautiful pieces that you put in starting to to show and then at this point I would dry it off and I'm going to kind of brush it a little bit here we're going to remove the, the tape remove and see how it's giving me a line for my grout and if it needs to be smoothed out then I'm going to just do it with my finger and you can clean off any of the little pieces that you have up here with your clean sponge and that is all there is to it you let it dry and then you clean off all the tiles and then what I would do is put some wire about 18 gauge wire insert it into the holes and make my hanger isn't that fun I just love that thanks everyone Candice J is the Creative Play Muse over at CoolToCraft.com. Her Creative Play makes my heart sing. Here's Candice to talk about what inspires some of her creativity. Or rather, I should say, who inspires her creativity. Thanks, Tiffany. And hi, everyone. I'd like for you to meet Conan the Barbarian. He's been an invaluable family member for 16 years. He came to us at a time when we most needed to learn lessons of unconditional love. And he continues to show us every day that we are loved because of who we are, wholly and completely. I want to share with you some of the art that Conan has inspired. These are just a few of my favorite Conan-inspired artworks. This first piece is an earthenware tile. While the clay was still wet, I drew the picture on and carved a little bit, and then it's been fired and glazed and set into the top of a lovely box. This is an earthenware sculpture. It's Pudalanka Moon. It's a poodle sarcophagus that's been glazed in a gold luster. This is a digital art piece that was originally called the remake of Gidget, but since he would have played the part of Moondoggy, that's what I decided to call the photo. This is an earthenware box. It's hand formed and I've made over 200 of these with different subjects, but Conan is my favorite. And when you open the box, underneath the lid is a heart and it's filled with tiny clay balls so that when you shake it, it rattles. And the box is decorated with some bones and carvings. This is a Conan-inspired Mayan piece. It's a poodle chalk mold. And this is my favorite. It's called, These Are Not My Favorite Pajamas, Mom. Bless his little heart. 
He was so patient with me as I dressed him in my grandson's pajamas and took photos just to make art with. I'm so grateful to have him in my life. We're headed back to Eco Heidi's studio to see what she's creating with greeting cards. I have a great project. It's one of my favorites, and it's using greeting cards, recycling greeting cards. So let's get started. So the first thing you do is you draw on your pattern onto the inside of your greeting card. And I like to take my patterns, anytime I have a pattern, I like to create a pattern out of the, the shrink plastic, the opaque shrink plastic. It's flexible, it's long lasting, and I can use it anytime that I'm ready to do this project. So you trace your pattern, you have two hearts and then two side pieces. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your side pieces and you're going to score them. And scoring them, you just go up about a quarter of an inch, use a stylus, and just push right along that line. Kind of create, it helps you to create a fold. And you're going to bend those. So I have two sides. Then you're going to put some glue on each side. And then just put them into place. You're going to put them right on the side. Put the next one right up against it. A little bit of glue right here on the end. And you're going to put glue on top. And then you put your other piece right on top. Now if you wanted to add lace or you want to add a ribbon for a handle, you can do that, but then it's perfectly made so you can put things inside of it. You can put like flowers, candy, whatever you want, little notes inside. It's that simple. So as everyone knows, the theme of today's show is things we love. Now one of the things I absolutely love doing is visiting my sister Candace in her studio. Who could not love this? <laughs> what are we looking at here? Oh, right behind us is a mosaic, <laughs> but behind that are all the herb jars. We have over 200 types of herbs here, and we have 60 kinds of herbal teas, and we do nothing but have fun making herbs all day along with our crafting. One of the things we need to think about in things we love is actually loving ourselves and nurturing ourselves. Candace has a rose petal salve that I absolutely love. And you've been making this for a while and selling this at your studio. Yes, I have. And rose petal represents love. So that's the best herb to use today for the uh, salve because it, roses are love. You're going to show us how you make your salve? Absolutely. Let me share my recipe for rose petal salve. You're going to need three quarters of a cup of almond oil, one quarter of a cup of jojoba oil, one pinch of alkanet, and I'll tell you what that is, one cup of rose petals, one eighth of a cup of beeswax, and some rose essential oil. Now, rose petal salve is great for chapped skin, chapped lips, blemishes, rough hands and elbows, diaper rash, and for your lips and under your eyes. So this is fabulous salve for all your skin needs. The greatest thing is it's easy to make. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a, a pot. We're going to use a pot today, um, but you should do this in a crock pot. 
because the crock pot does not have to be watched and you're working with oil so you don't want to have something on the stove but today we already have something in the crock pot that's finished our finished product so today we're just going to show you how to put this together so this recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of almond oil and this is almond oil Pour our almond oil in. We have a quarter cup, a quarter cup of jojoba oil. Those are your oils. You put them in your pan first, and then you would heat up your crock pot. Don't put, don't heat the crock pot up first, and then put your put your oils in, and then we're going to put our herbs in. We're going to be using roses. We're going to do a cup of rose petals. These are pretty much whole little rose buds, but this it works just as well. This is alkanet. This is a dye plant. And this will turn the salve a really bright, pretty red. The rose petals will give it some sort of a pink tint, but this will give you a red tint. So we're just going to add a pinch of this because this is really red. So we're just putting a pinch of alkanet in. That's as easy as it is to start with. All we're going to do now is heat it up. So this will be in your crock pot. You're just going to put the lid on and you're going to cook this for three hours. Okay, our salve has been cooking in the crock pot for three hours. So we're at the point now where we're going to strain out the herb material. You need hot pad holders because it's very hot. And you're going to need a coffee filter, a strainer, and a glass measuring cup. This is all very hot, so you want to make sure you have the proper tools. And you're going to pour your salve mixture into your coffee filter. You want to wipe off because this crock pot's hot. You don't want the oil down in your crock pot. Okay, now this is going to sit here and strain. It takes a little while, maybe 20 minutes, for all the oil to drip through the, the coffee filter and just leave the herbs. So when this is fully drained through, you kind of just put the coffee filter together and you're going to push down till you get all the oil out. Thank goodness. Now usually this is very, very hot. It's not quite as hot. Normally you couldn't touch it as quickly, but that's the process. And this is your salve ready to go back into your crock pot. So at this point, we have our salve, but it's not thick. So in order to make our salve thick, we're going to use grated beeswax. Grated beeswax is great because it's already grated. If you've ever seen a chunk of beeswax, you have to take a hammer to it. So you always want to buy it grated. We're just going to need an eighth of a cup. And we're just going to put it into our salve. Now I use a, a little toothpick to stir it because you don't, first off, it's very red from our alkanet. And all we're doing is trying to get the beeswax to melt into the salve oils. And this takes very little time, but you want to make sure you have it totally melted. We have a few herbs in here today, but if you would do it too fast and it's not melted, then it's not going to firm up the way it needs to. Now that our beeswax is melted, you can see it's all clear. There's no little floating pieces of, of beeswax in it. We're going to add our rose essential oil. And rose essential oil is very expensive, so you don't use too many drops, but you do want, if you can, to put a few drops of rose oil. Rose oil also comes in jojoba oil, and it's much cheaper. And we're going to pour the salve into um, another container so we can pour it into our little jars. If you try to pour it out of the big crock pot, it's very hard to pour. So let me move this over and we're going to pour 
our salve mixture into the measuring cup. And then we're going to bring over our little jars. And you can use any size jars you want. And it's already starting to set up. I don't know if you can see, but the beeswax is already starting to set up. So you don't have much time. And you want to pour each little container full. And that's all there is to it. It's all done. It's already setting up. All you need to do at this point is let it set up and put a lid on it. Remember, the reason that we put the beeswax into the oil mixture is that we want the sap to be thick. So it's not salve unless it has beeswax or cocoa butter or something in it to make it thicker. So that's all there is to it. And we just cap it and we're ready to go. And it's, it's usable immediately. Well, Candace, you make this look so easy. And it was so easy. I just showed you how to do it. It's very easy. But for those of us who don't have all of these supplies and essential oils and oils and Alkanet, fortunately, Candace sells this at her studio. I do, and uh, we will make it up for you if you don't want to make it at home. There we go. The test. Ah, uh, I love your rose petal sap. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how. Come on a safari with me. Come on a safari with me. Oh, dude, it's you! Hey, it's me, Candace, the cool craft creator, play muse. Dude, have you seen the theme for this month? It's totally gnarly. You gotta watch the next video, and then you gotta do it. Cause it's so awesome. And then, you'll get one cool to cash smackaroo just for playing along. You gotta do it. You gotta watch the video and then you gotta play. And then when you get four cool to cash smackaroos, you'll get something totally handmade from my studio. Sweet! So go view and play along. Dude, totally! Hi, it's me again, Candace, the Cool to Craft Creative Play Muse. I'm here to remind you that the Creative Play theme for February is Share Your Heart. We'd like for you to think of something that you're passionate about and share it. Teach it, gift it, do it, tell us all about it. We want to hear about your inspirations and your process, and we want to see photos too. And then you send it to Candace at cooltocraft.com and I can share it with the world. I want to show you something that I'm passionate about. Joy! This is a journal that I made for my sister-in-law. It's her joy journal and it's sparkly and it's got a little polymer clay sun and he's all shiny. And then you open it up and you fill it with things that you are joyful about. I love sharing joy. Joy is my word. It's my thing. I'd like to see what your thing is. So send it on. Remember, Candace, cooltocraft.com. And I will see you later and stay crafty, my friends. Hi, I'm Linda with Craft Tech University, the premier online learning center that was developed with you in mind. Our instructors are among the industry's best, and you can choose to take a class live in real time in the comfort of your own home from some of your favorite teachers. Or you can choose our self-paced on-demand classes that fit your time, your schedule, and your budget. Just take a look at our spring class lineup.
a big plus with our classes at Craft Tech University is that we record all of our live classes. That way when you take them you can go back on your own time and pick up anything that you might have missed or fine tune some of those new techniques that you've learned. To get more information and to register for any of our classes, visit us at crafttechuniversity.com. Click on the register for class link. We'd love to see you in an upcoming class at Craft Tech University. You're invited! Sign up today for the Cool to Craft newsletter from FaithCrafts.com. It's an easy way to have new, creative, and crafty ideas delivered right to your email inbox. Featuring photo and instruction tutorials from your favorite crafting hosts and designers, along with featured videos, favorite picks, giveaways, and more. It's a great follow-up to each week's Cool to Craft channel shows. Sit back and enjoy the creative ideas we bring to life. Go to cooltocraft.com to sign up today. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Inspired at Home. I hope that you have enjoyed our topic of love on today's show and that you head on out and share the things you love with everyone in your world. We love to hear from our friends and fans, so we invite you to leave a comment about today's show on the Cool to Craft Facebook fan page. We appreciate your help in spreading the word about Inspired at Home. So, if you enjoy the show, please, please let your friends know. Before I say goodbye, I want to remind everyone that you can find the Cool to Craft channel show schedules at cooltocraft.com. All you do is you just click on Internet TV and you print off the schedule to find out which shows that you can watch in the weeks ahead. Thanks again for joining me and my amazing creative friends here today on Inspired at Home. Get creative, get inspired, share the love. We're sending you love. And remember, all you need is love. Bye.